Hey, good morning. Ben here again with Studio on the Lake. Here is the part one of Abe Lincoln, uh, Whirly Gig. And uh, he would be the second one that we're going to do. And uh, Jordy called Uncle Sam Abe Lincoln, but Abe Lincoln is a guy all by himself. Hey, here's a quick recap of the Yeti and then the original Uncle Sam. And uh, I, I didn't show you the painting part of it because I, I, once again, I, I think that's uh, painful to watch. But here's the Yeti. He's got uh, uh, dark undertones, he glazes up on top, and then uh, kind of a blue-green uh, eye uh, combination. But there's, there's the Yeti. And uh, here's the original Uncle Sam. And there's the one that uh, was just finished in the last video next to him. Uh, you'll notice I went ahead and put a Canadian flag on one paddle and then on the other paddle uh, American flag the same thing up there on his arms uh, I, I will put a, a finish coat on on this one like a matte matte finish I, I gotta tell you that Canadian maple leaf was a pain in the butt uh, that is a weird design when you really get to looking at it so here's a chunk uh, back for the Abe Lincoln a uh, big old chunk of basswood I, I cut a equivalent of a 2 before 4 out of it because these things were originally made out of uh, redwood 2 4s 25, 30 years ago. I don't recall. And then this guy sits on a stump. So here's a here's the outline uh, to get the dimensions. The beauty of this is a long time ago I, I figured the dimensions of this thing out and I don't have to anymore because I've got a great pattern. Uh, with the one uh, sometimes I blew these up but there he is cut out on the bandsaw It's been many many videos since I've shown you guys that and then here's uh, doing the side profile Again, you you can get these guys out of a two before if you want a pattern for these uh, Let me know I intend at some point to get my Facebook act together uh, Where I can start putting some patterns for these for you guys to download just a PDF uh, If anybody's interested and uh, I'm going to need some patterns in the future for this, the smaller carvings that I intend to do uh, that are more instructional. As always, draw your center lines. If you don't, then you don't know where the middle's at. And I, I draw, I could do it in pencil, but you couldn't see it. So here we jumped ahead a little bit, setting the, uh, the depths of the face and where the hat comes in now I'm going to admit uh, most of this video is done uh, in three times the speed uh, you've already seen the basic concept of these guys if you go back and watch the Uncle Sam if you haven't uh, subscribed by now uh, please do so so you don't uh, you don't miss these because I'm going to reference different videos a lot of times uh, I also try to keep I, I suspect in this one's going to be 15 18 20 minutes something like that that's why I developed or uh, broke it into two parts some people are saying that the 30 minutes 35 minutes is a little long and I got to agree and uh, like I said I'm only getting 30 or 40 percent watch rate he, even though Jordy says he watches the whole thing and I know he does because he doesn't miss a thing uh, I suggest you stick around at the end of this because there's a little something special with an egg uh, at the very end of this or if uh, so inclined I guess just go ahead and skip it through uh, we did go over a thousand and uh, we're quite a ways over a thousand now when it rains it pours I guess uh, we're still 500 watch hours short of 4,000 uh, for the year but that's rapidly catching up I did some math and, and uh, at the rate it's going now we're getting 30 watch hours a day uh, give or take and uh, we should be done in uh, uh, two or three weeks four weeks So we'll see. Here's his face. Uh, I do the just did the initial uh, blocking of that, and then kind of rounded around. Uh, the original guy was uh, carved with uh, knives and chisels uh, by hand, and not with uh, power carvers. Uh, and I, I, I left him a little blocky. When you're doing character carvers, a lot of times it's about planes. Uh, you, you cut down and leave a plane in there. Gene Messer can uh, certainly demonstrate that for you. And you, by all means, should go out and over and check his stuff out. Uh, he, he is a master of uh, uh, 
of teaching uh, carving with a knife and, and a character carving in particular. So there's there he is blocked out, and th this guy I'm going to round his face out just a little bit more than the than the original. Part of the beauty is uh, this, there's no no reason to duplicate a piece exactly. Um, and I, I've said before, the first one is always the best if you're going to do uh, some stuff. If you go over and check out Doug Linker, you'll see that he does three or four iterations and then films for an hour on the one that he decided to carve. That would drive me insane. Uh, and, uh, and they wouldn't look a lot alike. I just don't, don't have the patience to do that sort of thing. But here is Abe uh, coming along. The bits I'm using on that are cuts alls, and there's a cuts all link down below if you want to save some money. Here's his hat. I decided to do his hat in two pieces. The original was also done in two pieces because it's extremely thin and extremely flat, ironically enough. Uh, so there's an old German jeweler saw. I use that for everything. It's got a pretty fine blade in it. I could have got up and walked over to the bandsaw or the jigsaw. And and done that but uh, too lazy once you get the pillow set beside your chair and arm and the TV going so we're going to cut the center out then this is going to slide down over the top of his head it takes a little bit of work to get this thing to match and that's pretty close that's about ready to go down on there decision on whether you do the top or do the the hat I decided to go ahead and take the center out of the hat poof down there it goes and check out the angle give him kind of a rakish uh, his hat to the side decided I liked it there and now I'm going to take uh, with a knife and, and carve that ledge down just a hair and that'll sit right up on uh, top of that that's a Ramelson knife for those of you that are interested that's the current ones that I like uh, they, they come extremely sharp They'll last for 10 years if you treat them correctly. Um, and this one I'm real fond of. You can get it for about 20 bucks on Amazon. Just ch check out Ramel, look up Ramelson, R-A-M-E-L-S-O-N, I believe. And he, he has a several different ones. So I put some, uh, uh, oh, what the heck, super glue on, on that to hold it. And it's still a little bit wet, but I had a, a little hair of a gap between the top of the hat and uh, there so I mixed up some quick wood and threw that in there and uh, I got advice that uh, don't stick this crap in there when you when you got uh, when it's wet you can see it's stuck to my fingers the super glue activates the epoxy and, and vice versa and it, it really makes a mess on your fingers so there's a hat uh, later on in the video we'll, we'll carve the rim of that bad boy down a little bit and now that I got his face designed in there I, I've switched to a, uh, a diamond round bit the beauty of a round bit is you can go in any direction uh, with that and once you have something blocked out uh, you can take small small bites you will have to come back with something else and, and take out the little ridge lines you left with the ball but uh, for sculpting in detail this uh, this ball gets you right down there pretty quick I do have the uh, original one sitting up on a stump looking at him and uh, his beard kind of wraps around he's got a half beard without a mustache and so far I'm, I'm pleased with the dimensions the way it's coming out unlike Uncle Sam I, I didn't have to lop off the top of his head to get where he's going so now back to a cuts all a uh, bit in, in the uh, the blue hand piece which is 40,000 I, I talk about in other other videos uh, what the carving station looks like over on the right there that's P, P, PJL Enterprises out of uh, Minnesota a little known one that I've stuck with for 30 years now it's a guy in his garage that makes these I, I think the the whole combo that I use which is the Ultima uh, we'll set you back about 350 400 bucks I, I don't remember uh, if you're curious ask uh, ask in the comments and I'll, I'll go ahead and, and let you know but I did do a video on that a while back 
Uh, if I ever, ever get my act together, uh, I'll link that stuff on Facebook and pages that you can actually get to uh, to see that. There, there are, uh, I don't know, 101, 102 videos in there. I'm going to go back and, and do some of the early videos. Uh, my editing has gotten a lot better. Uh, I, I edit uh, these things in DaVinci Resolve. And uh, I, I figured out, I learned a lot since I've been doing this. And, and I can actually probably take some of those earlier videos. And, and uh, I do have the original footage. There's uh, four or five terabytes of that crap that's on... Uh, on uh, uh, hard drives, the plug-in hard drives that I save, so I can go back, pull the original footage, and, and, and I'm going to re-edit a couple of those early videos. Uh, they might be worthwhile uh, to do those, so expect those in the future. Uh, that's another good reason to subscribe. This guy was done, like I said before, in uh, three times on most of it. And the intent was to, to keep on moving. You've seen with Uncle Sam how this is done. If anybody needs some more details, uh, go ahead and, and make a comment. And I'll be happy to uh, slap up a, a little video or answer answer those questions. Uh, we're getting to that point now. So if there's one particular part of the, the build that, that you, you want to see more of or you have a question on, on how I go about doing this, um, by all means, ask, and, and I'll give it a shot. Because if, if you ask the question, uh, there's obviously going to be more people that are interested in this. Other than that, this is just uh, number two, early gig, part one, uh, breaking it down. I should be able to finish this guy in two. Uh, he is a, a one of my favorites. Uh, the Uncle Sam is one of my favorite carvings uh, that I've ever done, and the Abe Lincoln is, uh, is up in that group of favorite carvings. So he's got a long coat on, uh, high waist there that you can't really, you can see in the left, but uh, you're going to see there's a lot of material that removes and his vest kind of sticks out over his pants. I'll come back with the black and give the, the lines, show you the lines that I'm carving too. And you can see how this uh, came out of a two before, you can, you can see them in there. You start doing uh, carving or art. When we had the wood carving shop, I had a carving station up in the corner, and people would would come up and watch. And, and that's interesting to to be able to talk with people while you're carving. And uh, they would say, uh, "Well, do you see? Does the wood tell you what's inside of it?" And uh, that always kind of amused me. Artists have a tendency to get, I don't know, pretentious or I don't even know the good word for it. Uh, they talk about esoteric crap that nobody cares about. Uh, I don't see something in the wood. Now, on occasion, I have a piece of driftwood and it, it says, hey, I'm a giraffe. Uh, but by and large, this was a two before and it didn't say anything. I decided that I wanted to turn it into a Lincoln and it was a block of wood. And... I removed everything that didn't look like Abe Lincoln. So there's the secret. Remove everything that doesn't look like what you want it to look like. Now, was it hidden in the block of wood? No more so than uh, anything else. So I, I guess my, my comment would be to you artists, don't get full of yourself. Just do... Uh, do what you want. People are going to make up what they want. You've seen folks sit, stand around talk about a painting that someone made 150 years ago that's worth uh, 8.5 million dollars, and uh, they can spend hours telling you what he meant when he painted it. And in reality, I kind of got to think that uh, the guy just enjoyed painting, had a good subject, and went to town on it. He, he didn't intend to talk about any deep meeting in it he was enjoying himself and doing what he liked to do which was paint but i guess if you make a living uh trying to talk about art then uh you got to make crap up to it probably makes no difference whatsoever
Hey, good looking sock there. Hey, Jordy, there is a, a package coming for you, Jordy, and it's going to have some socks in it. It's going to have some eggs, and uh, I may throw a carving or, or something in there, but uh, as per my norm, I haven't got around to it. Still messing around at the farm with the ducks. Uh, we've got a garden out there, and I got a huge pile of brush that I've been burning. Unfortunately, here in Wisconsin, they only let us burn from six at night to midnight. I'm not real sure of the reasoning for that. <coughs> I was burning the other day, and I popped up on my phone. I had a burn permit. I popped up on my phone. Had a really nice fire going for three or four hours, and uh, looked looked at 11 o'clock when they update the daily burn, and it was uh, burning okay from 6 p.m. to midnight. So I had to put it out hoping that uh, somebody didn't come by and give me a fine for that. Shall we burn in uh, the lines? You're going to see in this one, I, I pick up the knife quite a bit because if I, I want a straight line or uh, uh, get a curve going in there, it's just as quick or quicker with that knife. You can see I take quite a bit off fairly rapidly. cutting in his feet he's gonna stand up on a stump you can see the original stump it, it did at one time have uh, bark around it uh, for those of you that do this sort of thing or play around with with bark uh, or leaving bark on something the bark tends to or the, the wood shrinks and the bark will break off unless you treat it especially and are real careful with it but eventually that bark is gonna break off and uh, go so it has on this guy I'll put him on a stump. I'll probably put him on uh, a birchwood stump uh, this time because I do have some birchwood around here. And that bark has a tendency to stay a little bit better than some of the others. So I'm back to a, a ball there for however long that lasts. Not very long at all. And uh, this is a saber tooth actually. And I apologize for the uh, slightly out of focus. I do shoot these three or four feet, or about three feet away, uh, but I, I'm rounding the contours into the hat, and you can see that brim is going to be fairly flat on that guy. So I, I, the challenge here is to get it thin enough to read as a thin brim, and yet leave it thick enough that it doesn't break on that. I think he's probably all right in the center. So there we go, the, the, the intent of a quick video, uh, clean him up a little bit. You can see he is going to be Uncle Sam, and he's going to look right, and his face is uh, coming out pretty nice. So here's here's a fun part. Here's a duck egg, and this is real quick. Uh, there's going to be a little another video on this. has a high-speed burr in there, an engraving burr, and I, I think my stuff may not be f uh, f high enough speed to do this, but uh, I'm just playing around at this point. And uh, there'll be a future video on that. I'm sending Jordy some of these too. So Jordy, get yourself an engraving bit. Uh, put it in your highest speed thing. This one, I, I was really kind of impressed. I, I didn't break it. I did a couple of earlier ones and broke them. And, but, but this is just a quick down. There's a membrane inside. When you get done, you there's a way to put this in bleach. And that membrane dissolves. And each of these will show through as a light and poof that's what happens to eggs sometimes it did not break but that will be in the future so like subscribe and by all means comment and uh, we'll see you on part two of finishing this thing thanks it's been ben with studio on the lake